Si Mami gawa natin ng ano. Amen. Amen. Okay. We are continuing our study in Joshua. As we make our way to the land, we are learning from the conquest, the triumphs, and the defeats. Tuesday, we were at AI that went down in defeat. So the question is, why? Why defeat? Why ruin? We went to uh, Abraham, back at the Terebinth tree, the tree at Moray. That means the teacher, instruction, Torah, Torah instruction. Joshua, when he was being commissioned, was given this command, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. <clears throat> But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you'll make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. To make our way prosperous and have good success, that is our desire. <clears throat> what prosperous and successful ministry we desire for Emmanuel Israel. Can I get an amen? What do we want to see? As our ministry goes from city to city, as we continue to move toward the land that is Israel, toward Yerushalayim, we don't want to have an AI, a defeat. So we're going to draw parallels as we're moving along. As Joshua is leading the children of Israel into the promise. Amen. No, no, no. Just and so my... keep in mind that we, who are Yeshua's army, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And we are being called out and preparing ourselves for war. What war are we talking about? There is a spiritual war going on. We do not war against flesh and blood. People are not our enemy. Principalities, powers, dominions, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, that's the enemy. And you know who heads the enemy's armies? The whole host of wickedness in the spiritual places, in heavenly places? Satan. Satan. That dragon of old, he as what Yeshua referred to him as the prince of this world. Yeshua said, he has nothing in me. We should have the same declaration like Yeshua. Satan has nothing in me. Once we give the enemy a foothold. Once we allow the enemy into the door, he's going to want to take the hole. He's not satisfied with just a little bit. He wants more. And so we know, as we go into today's study, that obedience is what makes the difference between prospering and defeat what does it mean to prosper it means to be successful it means that that when when god calls us to ministry that our ministry prospers and we have good success and how many want to want to fulfill their calling you've been called you've been chosen yeshua called you and chose you that we should go that we should bear fruit, that our fruit should remain with this blessed promise that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. There is a great promise of answered prayer. How many want to have that confidence that when you go to God in prayer, 
asking in the name of Jesus, the Father will give you what you ask. So when we pray for somebody to be healed, we have this promise, true and faithful. They will be what? Healed. There's no doubt that the promise of God to his people regarding our prayers, our prayers are the most fearful weapon in our arsenal against Satan and all of the host of wickedness. Because when you begin to pray against the devil, he trembles in fear. And so what we want to do in this battle is to take down those strongholds of the devil. To bind the devil. When Yeshua sent his missionaries two by two, he didn't send them without spiritual weapons of warfare. He gave them authority. How many of us know that we have authority to cast out devils? You see, why would we be given authority to lay hands on the sick and they will recover? But in order for that to happen, you have to believe in the miraculous power of God. Amen, Israel. We stand on the promise of God. That his exceedingly great power, which works mightily in us who believe. This is the power by which he raised Jesus from the dead. God who raises the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. This is the God of Abraham. This is the God of Isaac. This is the God of Jacob. Israel, understand, those who know their God will carry out great exploits. Those exploits are not going to be anything that we do in our own humanity. How do we carry out great exploits? We pray. We pray. And when we pray, God moves through the prayers of his saints. And so what we are learning here is that when Joshua prayed, when Moshe pleaded, when Jacob prayed, when Isaac prayed, when Abraham prayed, when Elijah prayed, when Jeremiah prayed, when Samuel prayed, great and mighty things happened as a result of prayer. Prayer is what brings down the strongholds of the devil. Amen, Israel, you are the praying warriors in the army of the Lord. And we have been called to go to the land and to the people of Israel, taking the gospel to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. We declare that we are the army of the Lord. We declare that we take up our spiritual weapons of warfare. And so what we are going to be learning here is, first of all, we are between Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. What does that mean? Symbolically, that means that between the house of God and ruin, which is what Ai means, we are standing. We are camping at the mountain. Now, I'm going to ask you, what mountain did Abraham pitch his tent? That was the mountain between these two points. Why is that so important for us to understand? Because we are always standing between these two points. You either going to obey God or disobey him. Always. 
all disobedience brought ruin to the children of Israel when they disobeyed God. Who did God swear they would not enter his rest? But to those who disobeyed him, those who would not believe him, those who would not obey the commandment of God to go up and take the land. They refused to fight. Laodicea is not a warring church. It is, it is a church that has sold itself to pleasure. It does not want the dragon to attack it. And therefore, Laodicea will say concerning Israel, we want no part of Israel. We will not take the gospel to the Jewish people because we don't want the enemy to attack us. Amen, Israel. Our whole ministry is Israel. It's in our name. Emmanuel Israel. Our mission is to Israel. And we have to remember there is an enemy that is enraged against Israel. It is Satan, that serpent of old, the dragon, is enraged against Israel. And he goes after the rest of her offspring. You know who they are? These are the ones that keep the commandments of God. That means they're the obedient ones. Satan doesn't go after the disobedient ones. He already has them. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua, that is who Satan targets. We make no, no alliance with the devil. Paul said, do not give the devil any advantage. Don't give place to the devil. And we're going to be learning that in our studies every day. Why do we need to be armed with this knowledge and this truth? Because we are entering perilous times. We are in the latter days that the scripture says many will fall away from the faith. That means they were in the faith. They were in the house of God and they departed from the faith. Why? Because they followed deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It's out there. Today, I received an invitation from a rabbi to partake in a study because the synagogue embraces the LGBT community. What God calls an abomination, they embrace it. What is the enemy trying to do? To creep into the church, to creep into the synagogues and bring them down from within by opening the doors to immorality. Well, well, let's take a look at one man among the children of Israel, a warrior by the name of Achan. And what he suffered as one of the chosen of God was ruin. How do we end up in ruin? When we allow Satan to deceive us and we let the enemy in. Now, let's all go to Ephesians because it's very important that we grasp this from the perspective of being members of the house of God, the church, the pillar of truth. And so understand something. Know who the enemy is. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There's no other way for us to fight this battle but in the power 
of the Lord, his might, his spiritual power. That's the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Put on the whole armor of God. We have to suit up every day for the battle because we know that the enemy is out there. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Do you know that the devil is a schemer? He is a deceiver. There is no truth in him. For we do not wrestle. We do not war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And do who do you think rules over the spiritual host of wickedness? None other than Satan himself. The one that, 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 that confronted Jesus at the beginning of his ministry and made Jesus an offer that most would not refuse. And that is bow down and worship me and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. But the Lord would not take that offer. Why? Thou shalt not covet. The 10th commandment in the Torah, thou shalt not covet. That is the sin of Achan. And that's what brought down the defeat at Ai. After that awesome victory at Jericho, the armies of Israel were defeated at Ai because there was sin in the camp. When sin creeps into the church, no matter how they try to hide it, that sin will find you out. And when it does, it'll take you down and a whole lot of people around you down. There's nothing more devastating than a ministry that has been ruined by sin. Because there was corruption because there was wickedness in the church. And it starts from the pastor all the way down through the staff to the congregation. And so what Paul is saying is that we have an adversary that is so clever, so, so strategic in how he creeps in. That pastors fall, ministries fail, and what we see is devastation and a church in ruin because of sin. You see, church, we're not exempt. Why are these examples recorded for us in the, the annals of, of Jewish history? Because we learn from these examples. Judgment begins with the house of God. And when the house of God is corrupt, when the house of God is lukewarm when the house of God is not fulfilling its mission and its ministry to the world, and in particular to the Jewish people, that house will lie in ruins because it's disobeyed God. And so we know, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Know that there will be an evil day. And having done all to stand. The imagery there is warfare. The enemy will attack. Satan will creep in. The devil will show up. And when he does, he's going to take casualties. He will take prisoners of war. And so, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. What is truth? The word of God is truth. How are we sanctified? By the word of God. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith by which you're able to quench all the fiery missiles of the wicked one. He's going to fire missiles at you. He's going to fire missiles at me. He's going to fire missiles at us. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always. You see, how often should we pray? Always. 
with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Learn to pray in the spirit. Being watchful to this end, meaning stand your watch. Yeshua said, watch and pray. What I say to you, I say to all, watch and pray because difficult times are ahead and tribulations are for sure going to happen. Nations will be in distress and there will be wars and famines and pestilences and all these things. Yes, church, there will be a pandemic. Yes, church, COVID-19, they don't want it to go away. They are making too much money. They're profiting from this. They're not looking for a cure. Okay. That's part of the warfare. You see, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication, for all the saints. Do you know we pray for the saints every day? Who are the saints? Pray for me, Paul says, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth. Pastor Gill, open your mouth boldly and declare to those synagogues that Jesus is the Messiah. And that you're embracing sexual immorality is a gross sin against God. And how can you call yourself the people of God when you're doing those wicked things? Do you not know when Israel committed those atrocities? Judgment came upon the children of Israel. To make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul said, for which I am an ambassador in chains. What Paul is saying is we represent Jesus Christ on earth. Who are the ambassadors of Christ? You and I are. That in it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. This is what I pray every day for each and every one of you. That when you open your mouth, the devil flees in terror because he is terrified at you because when you open your mouth you're going to do one of two things you're either going to pray or you're going to prophesy against the devil and when you do the devil flees because he's terrified of you that my beloved is emmanuel israel warriors who pray always in the spirit and they're watchful to this end. I don't want a thousand people in a church building like Laodicea. No, thank you, sir. I don't want it. I want 10 prayer warriors. That's all I need in a city. And God will save and spare the whole city for those 10. Because you see those 10 righteous ones, when they pray, they're like Elijah. And every time they pray, their prayer is effective. You know what effective prayer is? It's the prayer that gets the results. If we had more effectual leaders in the church, they would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. So why aren't we seeing that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when you pray, you get what you ask for. All right? I wanted to have an enjoyable Christmas holiday with my mom with us. And so I prayed, pleading the blood of Jesus over my mother that she would not come or be infected by any virus that might infect her you know what i forgot to do ask it for my whole family and you want to know what happened my son-in-law who is the only one who is vaccinated because he works in the county of he works in the city of los angeles let me tell you something he came infected and got all of us infected. We all got struck down with it because we were all together during the holiday. 
Then he went to his, his parents' home and got all of his family there infected. The only one that didn't get infected was my mother. That's the power of God. So now ask me, if next time I pray, I'm not going to pray and plead the blood over all my family. Because <laughs> you see, when you leave an open door, the enemy will take and enter in. You see, prayer does work. And my mother is a walking miracle, hallelujah, of the power of God to heal. And so you see, don't talk to me about a vaccine that is infecting the entire population of the world because I don't believe in your science. I believe in the power of God. And see, Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What we are going to be learning is that God is a miracle working God. And when we stop believing in miracles, we have stopped believing in the power of God. And so, with that having been said, let us know this, that this same apostle Paul warned the church you see, warn the church concerning those things which the world embraces. And we have to be watchful. We have to be sober-minded. We have to be on our guard because this is warfare. Know this. Amen? And so, Ephesians chapter 5 tells us, you see, warns us tells us who we are. Therefore, verse 1, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and, and gave himself for us, sacrificially gave himself. He offered himself as a sacrifice for us all. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But verse 3 tells us specifically but fornication and uncleanness or covetousness. Commandment number 10, thou shalt not covet. And here the church is being warned against all covetousness. Let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Because when we go and we study what happened to Achan, because of his covetousness, he broke the commandment of God. And there are consequences when you and I sin against the commandment of God. And so it is. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting. <clears throat> but rather giving of thanks. That's what we do. We, we pray. Always, and we're always giving thanks to God because we praise and we, we give thanks to God because these are the offerings that are a sweet-smelling aroma before the throne of God. We are a praying, praising people, and we're not ashamed to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But know this, verse 5, for this, for this, you know. Paul is instructing the church, the Christians... You know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater. In other words, if you are covetous, you're an idolater. That means you're putting other things before God himself. No fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and of Christ. What I'm saying is, if you are a Christian and you are in these things, don't think that you are going up in glory unless you repent of your fornication, un repent of your uncleanness, repent of your idolatry, then you will be there in AI in ruin. Because that's exactly what sin will do. It will lead to your ruin. 
your ministry will be ruined, your household will be ruined, your whole family will be ruined. And you see, it's warned right here to the church that these things are not to be even named among you and I as saints of God. How many of us know that we are the saints of God? Hallelujah. Yeah. And so how are these things happening? Because these lusts are deceitful. And there are deceitful spirits, lustful spirits that infect the people of God and cause them to commit these very atrocities that we're warned against. And so let no one deceive you with empty words. Don't let false preachers, false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, false rabbis, false whatever you want to call it. These people are liars. If they tell you it's okay to do these things, they are liars. They are wolves in sheep clothing. Whether they're pastors or they're rabbis or they're priests, they are liars. If they advocate these things and tell you, you still have a future in glory if you practice these things. Let no one deceive you, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, because if you are, you sharing in their sins, and we are being called out of this false religious system. Religion is false when it turns away from the truth of God. So once again, fornication, all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. So now that we've laid down that foundation, we go to Joshua with that in mind, because there was one person among the chosen of God that decided that he didn't have to obey the commandment of God, and he brought ruin to the children of Israel. So that they could not prevail in battle. So we go back to Ai. And we go back to the to now. We already know that there was destruction. There was defeat at Ai. Chapter 7 of Joshua. We know that there was something that was just not right as they're going into the battle. And so it is in verse 1 again. I'm going to repeat this. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things for Achan. We have a person named of the tribe of Judah. What did he do? He took of the accursed things. The commandment was, you are not to take of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. If you want to bring wrath down upon yourself, upon your family, sin. And so they went down in defeat. Verse 6, Joshua tore his clothes. This is the only way we respond to a defeat. It's not supposed to happen. Why did we fail? Why didn't this battle prosper? Why didn't we see good success as we, we went into the battle? Because there's something not right here. He falls on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. What is he doing? He, he can't understand why we failed. You see. And what was the divine response? Verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. He, he yelled it at him. Get up. Why do you lie on, thus on your face? Israel has sinned. Any time God's people sin, watch out. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. When we take the name of Jesus and profane it, 
when we transgress the co covenant of our God, and when we trample Jesus underfoot, the world mocks our Lord because of the hypocrisy of those who profess to know him, but in works they deny him. The man Israel, that must never be us. What did they do? Well, the Lord is not going to keep that a mystery. They have taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen. Thou shalt not steal. One of the commandments of God is thou shalt not steal. And they not only have stolen, but they have deceived. How can you deceive? That is the character of the devil. He's a deceiver. Isn't it amazing that when Christians are in sin, they have to lie? They have to deceive to cover their sin? Do you remember King David, the man after God's own heart? What did he do? He coveted his neighbor's wife. And when he carried out that evil desire, he committed adultery. And that led to murder. Commandment after commandment after commandment was broken because he covered his sin. And he tried to deceive the people that he was not in sin. But do you want to know something? He didn't get away with it. You see, church, we don't preach a watered down version of the gospel. I'm not going to give you ice cream cones and tell you you're all going to go up in glory in the rapture if you're evil, no matter how you're living your life. That's a lie out of the pit of hell. That's why we don't preach it. What we're saying is simply this. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. They have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. You see, the devil knows that. The way he weakens you is, is when you allow the devil to deceive you and you open your life, you open your door, you open your family, you open your marriage, you open your children, your grandchildren to the devil when you sin. So they could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies. What the devil wants you to do is turn your back on him so he can carry out his wicked schemes. No, we will not allow the devil to prevail. And so what is the consequence? What is the result? they have become doomed to destruction. How could this be, Lord? You promised to be with your people, Israel. Now they are bringing destruction upon themselves. That's what sin does. Destroys. Many a pastoral ministry has been destroyed, lies in ruin because of sin. And it impacts the whole church. And once again, the Lord is saying, I'll be with you. Neither will I be with you anymore. You see, it takes one proud, arrogant sinner in the body of Christ to think that the Lord is with them when they are sinning against God. You've already been deceived. If you believe that lie. Once again. The Lord is instructing Joshua. Now get up. Sanctify the people. Sanctify them. Saying sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Because thus says the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies. Until you take away the accursed thing. From among you. Do you know that we pray that daily? If anyone comes into our ministry with an accursed thing, it has to be rooted out. We will not tolerate hatred. We will not tolerate racism. We will not 
tolerate bigotry. We will not tolerate religious prejudice and bigotry. We will not tolerate it in the ranks of Emmanuel Israel. You come into our fellowship, we don't, we don't look at you and begin to judge you and categorize you because of the color of your skin or because you're this or you're that or you're not or whatever. Let me tell you something. We will not allow that accursed thing to fester in our fellowship. Any wonder why we're not very big? Because we cast it out. And the moment we get anybody in our ranks to begin to agitate and sow discord among the brethren, they will be thrown out of our fellowship because we have to protect the sanctity of our walk before God. I have been in too many churches where racism is destructive in that church. So we will not tolerate it. And if the church is offended because we are Jewish and because they don't want Jews in their, in their, in their church, then that church will have nothing to do with the men of Israel. Once again, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Verse 14, in the morning there sh you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to families, and the family which the Lord takes shall come by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. In other words, it will be found out. We'll take it by tribe. By household, by family, man by man. We'll narrow it down to the individual, to that dirty, rotten scoundrel that brought sin into the camp. And they will be rooted out. That's the power of God. Because we serve God in true righteousness and holiness. Not in the hypocrisy of claiming to be what we're not. And we're not demonstrating by our actions who we claim to be in the Lord. And so once again, then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord. And because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel, you don't do disgraceful things. God will judge his people. Judgment begins with the house of God. Once again, verse 16, so Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took the family of the, the, the Sarhites, and he brought the family of the Sarhites man by man, and it kept going down. Then he brought his household man by man, and Achan of the tribe of Judah was taken. You can't hide from God. You can't hide it. Verse 19, now Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And what does Achan say? Well, I'm a Christian. I'm not under law. I'm under grace. How many times have we heard that? We don't use the gospel as a cloak for vice to cover up our sin and think we're going to get away with it. I would not be a pastor who is standing right with God to warn you against such things. Understand, judgment will befall the sinner in the house of God. Those who are members of the covenant, those who are members of the household of God, like Achan and his entire family. And so it is. 
Verse 20 says, and Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. I have sinned. And this is what I have done. Now notice the sin. When I saw the lust of the eyes, Satan uses that. He used it against Eve. He, he, he got Eve to look at what was forbidden. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, I had to get it. What I saw was a beautiful, beautiful Babylonian garment. And then I saw 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. I couldn't resist the temptation. So I took it. I knew that these were the accursed things. I knew that these things were to be burned with fire. But who is God to tell me I can't have the good things in life? Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Achan, although he was of the tribe of Judah, although he was numbered among the children of Israel, although he was a soldier in the army of the Lord, he was moving toward the promise and he disqualified himself. And here's the sin. I coveted them and took them. Tenth commandment, thou shalt not covet. And there they are, hidden in the earth, in the midst of my tent, with the silver under it. What an attempt to cover up his sin. But you couldn't hide it from God. Verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers. And they ran to the tent. And there it was hidden in his tent with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent. Brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel. And laid them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all of Israel with him. Took Achan. The silver. The garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Achor. You know what's about to happen? Not only Achan, but his entire family is about to be destroyed because he coveted. Thou shalt not covet. And Yeshua taught his Talmudim. Be on your guard against every form of greed. Thou shalt not covet. Tenth commandment in the Torah. Verse 25, and Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire. After they had stoned them with stones and they raised over him a great heap of stones, still there to this day, that is Ai. There is Achan and his entire family and everything that he had and all the accursed things in ruin. Listen, ch listen, church, listen, brother, sister, my fellow saints, this is all sin will bring you ruin. And because you're members of the household of God, don't think you're going in a rapture if you've got something hid underneath because you can't hide it from God. That sin will find you out. And it will only cause you to lie in ruin and bring devastation and destruction. Satan knows that. Now, now that we've gotten rid of it, now that we, we've dealt with that,
Now the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you. Hallelujah. This is how we prepare for war. We must sanctify ourselves and be holy before our God. Don't think that a church that is Laodicean and laid back and think that you can get away with murder and all of these sinful things that you have any power. There is no power. What you got is a religious system, but it lacks the power. We must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And there's one way that Satan disarms us so that we are not powerful and we will flee from the enemy because we cannot stand against them. It is called sin. And what is a sin when you break the commandment of God? Church, keeping the commandments of God is what matters. What Achan brought to himself and his whole family was disqualified from having any share in the land, in the inheritance, in the promise. You see, Jesus warned us time and time again I come quickly. My reward is with me to give to each one according to his works. The works of Achan resulted in loss and ruin. Destruction and devastation for himself and his entire family. What does Jesus say? Repent. There's still time to repent. He speaks to the churches in Apocalypse, the apocalyptic churches. He's warning those sinful churches, unless you repent, I will come and I'll remove your lampstand. I'm going to come and I will thrust my sword into you. He's going to come like Joshua and destroy that sinner in the house of God. Jesus said this, watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man in that day. Imagine when the trumpet sounds and it's time for us to be caught up and meet the Lord in the air and you flee from the presence of God because you know that you are not right with your God. When's the right time to get right with God? Right now, sinner. I'm talking to you, saint, who thinks... You can get away with it. You can't. I'm warning you. Repent. Repent. While it is still time to repent. Get these things and thrust them out. Purge them out. Clean them out. Have no association with the unfruitful works of darkness. Don't let no one deceive you. If you think you're going to be received by Jesus with great fanfare and celebration because you're a bigot and you hate minorities you better wake up and get out from that hateful spirit if you're a christian and you hate a jew and you anathemize them as the christ killers you better repent of that sin and take that wicked thing out of your heart because that's going to be your ruin And so it is. You see. Understand. All the people of war with you. And arise. Go up to Ai. See now go back. And take that city. Because now I'm with you. The difference between victory and defeat. Is where you're at with the Lord. Sin will only separate you from your God. And once again, you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, only its spoil and its cattle, you shall take his booty for yourself. Now they have permission from God to take possession of the spoils of war. The injunction of the spoils of war, <laughs> well, at Jericho. 
they were not to take of that. You want to know why? Because you don't take from the first fruits of the increase. Remember, a tithe of all the spoils of war, Abraham brought to the feet of Melchizedek, king of Salam, who was a prefiguring of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see what happened. You don't take what the Lord says don't take. Goes all the way back to the beginning. Of all the trees in the garden, you may freely eat, but of that which is in the midst of the garden, you shall not, for in the day that you do, you shall surely die. And what does the lying devil say? You won't. You can sin. It's okay. You can take of the accursed things. You can fornicate. You can be a covetous person and still go to heaven, and you're still going to rise in, in, in the rapture. You've been lied to. You've been deceived. You're following those deceiving spirits. Those are doctrines of demons. It's not the truth. You want to know the truth? We're learning it right here. God will deal with you, sinner, no matter who you are. Do not use your liberty in the Lord as a cloak for vice. Don't think that you'll get away with it. It doesn't work. Once again, what is the Lord saying? You see? You now are permitted to take of these things. Okay? And so, what is it? Verse 3, so Joshua rose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city behind the city. Do not go very far from the city, but all of you. Be ready. Then I and all the people who are with me will approach the city and it will come about when they come out against us as at the first that we shall flee before them for they will come out after us till we have drawn them from the city for they will say they are fleeing before us as at the first. It's a trick. Why would God give them a strategy to fool the people that defeated them before? <laughs> you want to know what strategy is? It's how we, how we accomplish our mission. God gave Joshua strategy. How to defeat Ai. And see, understand. When we repent of our sins, we are renewed with greater strategy how to go back and, and beat the devil up. And so it was. They came. And sure enough, there's an ambush. <laughs> and they're, 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 they're going right into an ambush. Then you shall rise from the ambush and seize the city for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it will be when you have taken the city that you shall set the city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord, you shall do. See, I have commanded you. Understand, when we go into a city, our mission is to set it on fire. Because that is why the devil will flee the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of God. Hallelujah. You see, that is the army of God. Amen, Rochelle? You said it all. Comments, questions? He's led us into victory. I think Beatrice is trying to say something. Is anybody hearing me? Yeah, they're yes. hearing you. Oh, we hear you. Okay. For a moment I there, I wonder if I was 
on my <laughs> in my own corner here. <laughs> I'm in victory, so I'm not worried. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we will be in Joshua chapter two next, next Tuesday. Oh, okay. Lord willing. Okay, so we can read that preparation. Okay. We will go through Joshua chapter two because we're going to be looking at Rahab and how the two missionaries were sent to the house of Rahab because Rahab had been chosen by God to be saved. We see God's grace in this. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love you know, it's amazing, but Rahab and all her family were saved because of her obedience. And Achan and all his family was destroyed because of his disobedience. Isn't that something? That's a difference there. When you <laughs> obey, good things come about. Yes. And Rahab wasn't a Jew. <clears throat> and yet she's in the she's in the royal line with our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we don't have to be Jewish in order to be in the family of the Lord. Because what makes you a Jew is not that you're born a Jew, but you are a Jew in the heart. Yes. An obedient heart to the commandments of God, that's what makes you a Jew. Amen. Obedience, okay? Obedience. And God is no respect of persons. If you're a Gentile and you're doing the very things that God says do, you're going to be blessed because God looks at your heart. Yes. Yes. Okay? I don't think there's anything pleasing about a synagogue that's praising the very immorality that God condemned. Mm -hmm. you know, They're the, mocking the, my God. And the, the, the most grievous, well, not the most grievous, but the, the grievous part, too, of that is their name means gate of truth. And, that's right. gate of lie, truth. and it's a it, lie out of the pit of hell. It just, you know, when I saw who sent it out, it just. But you I, want to know I, something, I Rochelle? Let, let their eyes be open to the truth. Let How many churches, truth. Christian churches, are becoming the same thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah Satan it, is not only creeping into synagogues, he's taking churches, whole congregations, and they're being swept up in this lie. Yeah, yeah. They need to remember the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right, right. They need to understand that the fire of God reigns mightily yes. to wipe out those who live in such ungodly ways. Yes. There is nothing right about mm -hmm. that lifestyle. Take the warning. But again, we're the enemy of the state when we do warn the people against those things. <laughs> But yet we still will. We will take our stand. We truth. will take our stand and that will not be tolerated in Emmanuel Israel. Yeah. And we need to realize too the way one person's actions affect so many. Be encouraged in that also. Not just you know seeing it in the negative that we saw with Aiken, but to, to realize the impact you can have on your family and your friends when you walk in the light of the truth, then you know the blessing that comes upon you can fall out on your family and those that you care about also. So, you know, we have a high responsibility. We're not saved to be comfortable. We're saved that we might be a tool you to reach more for the Lord also. So you know, let it spur us onward. We are soldiers. We are in the battle. The battle is here. It's not tomorrow. It's here. It's today. It's all around us. And the, the worse this world is getting, the stronger we've got to be on our knees and in the, the strength of the spirit that we might be a, a testimony, that we might call it out. You know, it's... Um, you, you can't be complacent. You can't just ignore it. You've got to call it out when it comes into your sphere. So. Let me tell you something, okay? The day is coming when the government will mandate the churches and the synagogues that they must open their doors to the LGBT community. If they don't, they will be stripped of their nonprofit status. 
and those church properties and those synagogue properties will be confiscated by the state. They're already getting you ready for mandates with this vaccine. But remember, once you let the devil in, he's going to go for the whole thing. So once again, you take a stand in the name of the Lord and having done all to stand. And see, this is why our strategy, Emmanuel Israel, and I will say it again and again and again. Our ministry operates out of private residences. There's a reason for that, because those residents pay property taxes and the government loves taxes. And as long as we're paying taxes, they'll leave us alone. But those tax exempt properties, they're going to confiscate it. You see, that's where they're going to they're going to get the church and they're going to get these synagogues by turning them into gay and lesbian communities to mock mm -hmm. the Lord who calls that an abomination. Now, are you going to listen to God? Or are you going to bow your knee to man? Mm -hmm. Understand that the beast, the son of Satan, the Antichrist, is a man who has been possessed by Satan himself. We take a stand in the name of the Lord and we will not bow to the image mm -hmm. of the beast. Pastor Gill, yes. uh, the question, how would one uh, family would talk to their children about this stuff that's happening? It's all on TV. Men's it's kissing over. men. Women's it's kissing women. Over. So it's everywhere. I think about my grandkids, especially my grandboys. How do you explain to them that that it's that men you see on TV or on commercial, they're kissing each other and they're male, two male. Because they're teaching the children that that okay. lifestyle is good. Sad. Well, it's nothing that the Lord did not warn us of. Jesus said in, in those difficult times, he's going to divide families. Mm -hmm. Also, the, LGBT, the LGBT question among my, my children and grandchildren, they don't understand yes. why I am so old-fashioned and antiquated in my stand against it. Yes. And so you see, when, when that begins to divide households, and when you begin to see families torn apart on that question, my youngest grandson was in a conversation with my other grandchildren, elementary students. And they were discussing because he wanted to know whether he should have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And I said, where did you hear that? He says, my teacher said, I have to decide. <gasps> my hmm. Well, if that had been me, 20 years ago, I would have went and ripped the neck and tore that teacher apart. <laughs> you know, I have a friend that I lost friendship with him because he told me that his daughter was gay. And uh, at that time, his daughter was probably 14, 14. And I say, I'm so very sorry to hear that. And he said, why are you sorry? There's nothing to be sorry about. So oh. he didn't get it. He didn't get it. How can he say that's the way she was made? And I said, no, I don't think so. I know so. She wasn't made like that. But I guess it's so, um, how, how, do people, how do they deal with that? It's an opportunity for you when you're with your grandsons and you're talking about these things mm -hmm. to open up the word of God to them and help them understand God loves the sinner. God hates the sin. Same. He will not allow it. He will not excuse it. He will not ignore it. He'll not brush it under a rug. He will deal with it. And God made us in his image. He made us male and female 
we read that right from the very beginning. And he instituted from the beginning, a man comes together with a woman. And you just lay it out that this is the standard. There is no question about it. There is no, uh, it's not up for whether you like it or not, whether your teacher likes it or not. This is the facts. This is the word of God. And this is what we're called to live by. God made us. He made this world. He makes the rules. If we go against his rules, we will suffer for it, whether it be immediate or whether it comes later, we will suffer the consequences of a decision of going against God. So this is why we do not do what the world around us does. And this is our chance to show the world around us something different. And we want to show it to them in the love of God, because no one wants something that doesn't come in love. We are not here to pound it over them, but we're here to live it before them and to show them. And if we compromise our standard, we will not be a useful tool and we will not receive the Lord's blessing. But it's just, it's an opportunity to teach them how to walk according to what the Lord says and not according to their world around them. They're an age that they need to be thinking now about the decisions they are making, whether they're going to, to be involved in any of what this world entices with. And, it, you know, it's not, I feel badly that our world brings it down to the elementary level, but these kids are smart enough, you know, a little child can get saved. They're smart enough to know right and wrong and they can listen. And when they want to know why, Grandpa is antiquated. Grandpa needs to say, because this goes back thousands of years. This goes back to the very beginning. If you think I'm antiquated, yeah, it is ancient. And it, it is right. And it is true. And look at the blessing in my life because I'm abiding by what God says. So, you know, look at how the Lord has showered blessings on you, Dosi. When you took the stand, you took a while back. And you walked the walk so you didn't just talk it and look at the flood of blessings that have come your way you know use it for an example help your your grandson see that uh, uh, it may be not be the popular and it may cost them a friendship like it cost you but you would rather have the friendship of god than anyone else in your life yes right and so we Again, many Israel will not in any way embrace that lifestyle. Amen. When we one gotta... comes into our fellowship, we will love that person, but we will not advocate their sin. And we right. will not be, be there. No, we will not turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to sin because we see, no. we see the ruin that it brings not only to that person and to that person's family, but to others in the fellowship. How many... Israel's soldiers died because of one man's sin. Yeah. 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 So understand that we know what the Lord has told us. The Lord said we will be betrayed. Even by parents, brothers, relatives, friends. They'll put some of you to death. Why? Because this is so malignant that it's dividing households. And if you stand against the lifestyle that is being embraced by so many people and being perpetuated in, in our culture, they hate us because of the stand we take for holiness. Be holy, for I am holy. I am holy. They and anybody that takes offense to that, take it up with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. But we must watch and be watchful against every form that would creep in and the enemy would gain a foothold in our ministry. We will not allow that. Okay. And, and I hate to say it, but because the public school system is so full of, of Satan and his ways, we do have to be more proactive Pastor Gill and uh, his grandson's mama, they need to sit down 
and they need to talk to him and ask him, what are you learning in school? And there does have to be a correction given to what they're being taught because especially when they're little, teacher knows everything, you know, teachers held up and they've got to realize that's the position they need to get to the Lord and what does the Lord say and teach them from an early age to think for themselves. Is this what God says? And show them how to open up the Bible and find those answers because, you know, we, we don't want to teach them to come against every bit of authority. No, but they need to think, is this lining up with the authority of God? Is this truth? You know, they've got to, they have to learn from an early age, unfortunately. To Absolutely. That. And remember, God desires mercy. Amen. He desires forgiveness. What does God desire? Repentance. Because without repentance, it's just not going to be. And so it is. When we, when we go into the house of Rahab, you understand who, who Rahab was? Her lifestyle? What she represents? And yet we see God's mercy and grace upon her. We don't come to somebody's house to condemn them. Our hope and our prayer is that they will be saved. But we're not going to save people by becoming them. No. Rahab will go on to marry. In the line of Judah. And through her. Her name is mentioned in the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If that doesn't tell you about the power of God. There is where the hope is right there. And this is why our prayers have to knock down those strongholds of the devil. We will gain victory over sin. Over the works of the devil. In our communities, when we rise up as the prayer wars that we have been ordained to be, and we tear down those lies of the devil by coming against it in the name of the Lord. I know the devil's upset because he knocked me out of Zoom as I was talking. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even realize. Yeah, I was right in the middle of talking when boom, got clicked off of Zoom. I had to re, I had to go back on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our leadership here in prayer because I took Satana on in class yesterday. Also, so you all heard it who were tuned in. And anytime we speak against him, as we're doing, yeah, it, it ruffles his feathers. So <laughs> keep us in prayer because we need the, the strength of the Lord to continue to keep us that we push further and greater and farther for the Lord's name. No, not anything for us. It, this is for the Lord. We are in his battle. We are in the war. And... Uh, Pastor Gil, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Rowena. Oh, no, no. Oh, when you, uh, oh, all Marie. I heard was that you you have been invited to, uh, by a, a rabbi, and then you went out. Yeah. So I didn't hear what it was. Well, what it was is to be part of the LGBT movement. Oh. In the, the same has come from invites from pastors in churches, Christian churches, that are embracing that lifestyle. Oh, okay. One in particular is in San Bernardino. Mm. And pastor is is in that lifestyle. Married to same sex. Oh wow. So once again, we see it everywhere. Right, right. And so we we need to pray to bring those strongholds down. Of yeah. course. Winning San Bernardino is like trying to, to pull down hell because San Bernardino has long had strongholds that have been here for... Uh, San Bernardino was notorious for its immoral, immorality. 
And you know, one, one of the things I think that uh, uh, G, um, Satan has done such a, such a good job is in, in deceiving people that, see, God doesn't tell us to, to, uh, to hate those people. He, no. he tells us to love them, but not to agree with what they do because he does not like that. So that is that little line that people say, well, well, if I like them, I have to do what they do. No, you don't. Or you have to agree with what they do. We, we've had that, sister, throughout my ministry. It's always been, I've had to confront it mm -hmm. from the beginning. And, and it's, it has sought to creep into the church, and I've had to deal with it. And I've not always been taken popular when I take a stand against it. And right. so know that I, I have been, you know, I had one individual who came demanding that we ordain him. Oh my even gosh. Was in a, in a gay relationship oh. and he threatened to sue us if we didn't. Oh no. And so again, they'll take us to court, sue us, have me arrested for a hate crime because it's a protected class. And so once again, we see, we see the work of Satan all around us. But when it's creeping into the house of God, know this. If we don't take a stand, note what was being routed out of those cities as the children of Israel were advancing. They were removing those idols, those altars, those false religious things. False religion everywhere. And so understand, it's in our midst. It's in synagogues. It's in churches. Mm -hmm. It is a cancer that is spreading throughout the world because Satan knows that he only has a short time. And so we will call it out because we are warriors. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm not going to give San Bernardino up to it either. I will remind us that there have been godly men and women through the years who have prayed over San Bernardino. There is fertile soil in San Bernardino yet. See that has been planted in that ground. And I fervently pray for it to spring forth into a new life in this community as a testimony to the faithfulness of God, to our prayers and to our walk with him. And Pastor Gill knows well who I'm talking about in particular, because we've had the blessing of some of these people being in our lives and being our mentors and our guides that have gone on to heaven before us now. And we have got to take up where they left off we need to, to be in prayer i encourage you don't just pray for the ones you know pray over these communities we are here to be light to san bernardino yep. we are here to be a light to our neighborhood we are here to be a light to our our community you know the people that we rub shoulders with we we've got to win the battle in prayer because it is a spiritual battle and we're not battling against flesh and blood we're battling against the principalities and the powers of darkness in the air surrounding us but greater is he and i pray for them to be knocked out their their um, powers to be broken their arrows to fall in, into the ground and not into the hearts of the people around us but uh I, I will not give up the fight. And I know that I'm not alone in this. You all I know are with me, but we, yeah. we do. We've got to realize and take seriously the battle we are in now. We're in, we're in a spiritual war. It's a battle for souls. Yes. Yeah. This is the battle for souls. Understand that. Amen. Battle for souls. Amen. Our cry is that they be saved. The only way to be saved is they come to repent knowledge of the truth. 
<clears throat> and so without Jesus, there is no hope. There is no future. There is no glory. And see, it doesn't make any difference who you are, whether you are, you are of the circumcision or not. Whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, God is no respecter of persons. He is, he receives and he accepts those who fear him. Those who call upon his name. He's not going to turn a deaf ear and a blind eye. How beautiful the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We must preach the gospel to every creature. We need to preach the gospel to everyone, regardless of who they are. We're going to see that in our next study with, with, with Rahab. Rahab was not the kind of person you want to be friends with. Mm -hmm. But the question is, why was she saved? And the house of Achan was destroyed. And Achan was a member of the covenant of the, of the tribe of Judah. Descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the children of Israel. And why did he have to die that way? Why did his family have to die that way? And all of Rahab's family was saved. We're going to see that on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. So you see, Achan lost and lay in ruins because of his sin. You see, Achan should have known better because he was instructed from the Torah, thou shalt not covet. Rahab, on the other hand, is in darkness. But it took two Jewish missionaries to come to her house that brought salvation to her whole family. That's how God works. Amen. Amen. And we, want, we want to see families saved. Whole family. Mm -hmm. saved. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Amen. May the Lord so use us. Any other comments? Questions? I feel when was talking about, you know, God's no respecter of persons. I thought, yeah, he's an equal opportunity employer. <laughs> He'll take us all. <laughs> He'll use us all. So, well, why don't we close with a word of prayer? and uh, continue to meditate on what we have studied and may God use it in our lives as he wants to guide each one of us through this day and through the coming days. So, any volunteers to close in prayer? And if not, I'm more than happy to do it. I just don't want to hog it. I want to give other opportunities. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll close. Uh, Amen. Thank you, sister. Amen. Amen. All right. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for, for, your, for your word. Uh, that it, it, your word is uh, it's true because you are our, um, our uh, one true God. And everything that comes from you, Father, is, is uh, the truth. The truth that we need to live by the truth that we need to expose, and the truth that we need to receive. Father, mm -hmm. thank you for allowing us to uh, be able to study this word and help us, Father God, to open up our minds and our hearts to just place what we have received and have it ready in our tongues, Father, to be able to share with those that they are working, uh, walking in, uh, in darkness, Father. We may May we share this light that you have given us. And, and Father, just to, uh, um, and thank you for reminding us that you are the God that is in control of everything and that nothing uh, uh, goes uh, by you, Lord. You know our hearts, you know our desires. And 
we might be able to uh, 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 place a facade, Father, before people, but we cannot place it before you, Lord, because you can see our hearts and our the motives that are placed in our hearts. And thank you so much, Father. And we can see how we can receive blessings from you, Father, as the same uh, uh, by being obedient. And we also can see what we will receive if we are being disobedient. Father, I just pray that, um, that you continue to, uh, to work in our hearts and continue to lead us into what we need to, uh, uh, to see, to share, to do, and uh, help us to be bold, Father. Help us not to yes. be, not to be afraid of what yes, Lord. it might yes. happen to us, but to be afraid of what you may do to us, Father. If we are not um, to do what you want us to do, and always uh, help us to uh, uh, help us to remember that you are our protector. So you will protect Amen. us and you will guide us as well, Father. Thank yeah. you so much, Father. And I just pray Amen. that you continue to uh, bless this ministry, Lord, in, in ways that, that people will be in awe of what you can do with those that are obedi obedient to you, Father. Thank yes. you. In, yes. in the thank, name of Jesus, you, I pray. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Maria, thank, thank you. you. That was beautiful. And beautiful. Well yes. beautiful and thank the you, Holy Maria. Spirit. It's, it, yes. you know, we, when we pray in the Spirit, He gives us the words. Yes. Oh, Amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. You. Have a beautiful day. Um, you too. Thank you. Okay. Shalom, shalom. 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 Yeah. shalom. We'll see, see you tomorrow. We'll see you, Is it your time to pay for Le Mignon? Let <laughs> <laughs> me know where. That's okay. a son for you. Shalom. Shalom. He's Shalom. thinking about his stomach. <laughs> we'll meet you there. Lovely, you have a beautiful, loving mom. You know that. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hello.